Hello and welcome to this new video tutorial of WooCommerce B2B Marketplace Vendor Subdomain Plugin. Now this particular plugin is an add-on to the WooCommerce B2B Marketplace by Webcool so you'll have to have that first before making use of this particular plugin that's the WooCommerce B2B Marketplace Vendor Subdomain Plugin. Now using this plugin the admin can create different URLs for the B2B Marketplace suppliers as required. Apart from that, it allows the admin to add a prefix to the supplier's subdomain. Domain or the subdomain can be used to display only the supplier's products. The admin may assign separate domain names to the suppliers as required. And on the other hand, the customers can directly purchase products from the supplier's panel or from the uh, supplier's subdomain page itself. Now in today's video tutorial, I'll be taking you through the workflow of this particular plugin at the storefront and the backend configuration would also be shown to you. But before we proceed further with this particular video tutorial, please do subscribe to our channel and if you find this particular video helpful, then do kindly give it a thumbs up. So right now you can see that I'm on the uh, demo page of this particular plugin. That's the WooCommerce B2B Marketplace Vendor Subdomain plugin. So here I have the live demo that we have already set up. So first of all, let me show you the base domain here. So this is the base domain of uh, the uh, particular demo there. So let it come up. So this is the uh, base domain. As you can see here, here we have uh, the WooCommerce demo dot webcool.com forward slash the uh, thing. And here you can see that on the shop page, uh, we are able to see all of the products of the uh, B2B marketplace there, the products of the admin as well as of the multi vendor marketplaces uh, suppliers there. So this was uh, the uh, shop page uh, that uh, has the complete listing of the products from the suppliers as well as from the admin there. Now if I come back to this particular demo and I go to the supplier domain page, now you can see that uh, we have this uh, domain being uh, assigned there to the particular thing and uh, you can see that uh, this particular page would bring up the uh, shop page of the supplier himself as you can see here and here uh, this particular page displays only the supplier's products. Now one setting is there in the admin backend, uh, I'll be taking you through that in a while from now. Let me go to the backend panel as well. In the meantime, you can see that here we have here is the base uh, uh, base uh, domain there, and this is the subdomain there of the seller. And we are on the uh, shop page right now, so this particular thing only shows the products from the suppliers there. So if I go to any of the products as well, you can see that still we are on the same subdomain of the seller. And now if I go to the profile page of the seller, we'll be able to see one of the uh, what we see as the seller name this is the uh, subdomain of the seller there this is uh, the what we say as this is uh, the uh, prefix uh, to the seller name there that has been appended there to the subdomain of the seller there and here we are all on the seller uh, what we see as the profile page and we can see the complete listing of the seller products now one more thing is there uh, let me show you that uh, in the admin backend panel, we are having the vendor subdomain option that comes after the successful installation of this uh, particular plugin. Now we also have to do some configuration settings and for that uh, what you need to do is let me take you to the user guide first and then I'll come back to this particular thing. So after the successful installation of this particular plugin, what you need to do is uh, you need to uh, after you've enabled the subdomain and everything, then you have to go to the domain redirection settings and here the, the, the domain URL has to be set up by the admin for the sellers as you can see the seller domain at the very bottom then you have to make some DNS panel settings that includes the DNS panel entry and configuring the web servers so you can check it out in the user guide for more details how to do that now coming back uh, to the back end there so we have the enable subdomain option so this would enable the seller subdomain there uh, within the WooCommerce B2B marketplace itself and uh, then we have the vendor subdomain prefix that's the webcool the same is a uh, prefix here to the seller name there that's webcool John Doe dot demo store one demo store one is the subdomain there for the seller himself 
Now one more thing is there, then we have the enable domain. So right now this is disabled. So on the, for example, if I go to the uh, demo store one, let me go back to this uh, subdomain of the seller. Right now on the subdomain of the seller, we can see that uh, the products that are being displayed here are from the seller himself or from the supplier himself. Now, if uh, we go back and uh, we are going to enable this option here, that's the enable domain and we are saving this setting, then what happens is that on the seller subdomain, uh, apart from the supplier's products, the admin and the other market-based supplier products would also be displayed, right? So if you have enabled this option, otherwise if you have disabled this option, then on the seller subdomain, on the shop page, only the particular uh, supplier products would be visible to the customers and from here the customers can access any of the products of the supplier as you can see uh, I've selected the casual printed woman uh, woman uh, multicolor top there and here we still have the same subdomain of the seller there so yes uh, that was much about the uh, WooCommerce B2B marketplace vendor subdomain plugin and I hope it helped you out in understanding how the admin would be able to provide the subdomains to the uh, marketplace suppliers there and uh, how it appears uh, at the storefront and how the uh, URL appears there in the address bar. If you still have any questions, queries, suggestions or requirements regarding the same then you can anytime get back to us at support at the rate of webcool.com or you can raise a ticket at webcool.uvdesk.com as well. Apart from that if you find this particular video helpful then do kindly give it a thumbs up and lastly Thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead.